Okay. Welcome to round two, everybody. This is the first round that we're recording here at TJ's. Um, we're at the June Modern Challenge. As you probably know, if you've navigated here to our YouTube channel, thanks for doing that. You probably already know what's going on here, or you're Wyatt or Ray themselves. But if you don't, this is modern Magic the Gathering, a degenerate format where you play such cards as Crystal Ball and Pentad Prism. Truly, truly broken Magic cards. You know, all joking aside, though, uh, we have two players who are playing kind of divergent strategies. Um, Wyatt, who's on your right, there with the beanie, he's playing an ad nauseum combo deck, which is kind of uh, very powerful, but no one likes to play it. It's weird. It's like the kind of deck you'd see a lot on Magic Online, but not the kind of deck you'd see a lot in person at a store event. This is pretty stock -based. Uh, nothing too crazy, a couple spoils of the vault, uh, things like that. Uh, on the other side of the board is Ray Karkman, who's playing a deck of his own devising, a deck with its own thread on MTG Salvation. Hammer Slammer, Pyro Prison, he has a lot of things he calls it that I've seen, but basically it's a Blood Moon and Snaring Bridge Big Red Planeswalker deck. He doesn't have the Screds, but... He does have some of the other pieces like Chalices, Chandra, Koth, his rituals to power them out. He's playing Simeon Spirit Guides, Pyretic Rituals, Desperate Ritual. Uh, to power out very early lock pieces or big threats that win the game on their own like Goblin Rabble Master. So he keeps. He keeps the six. His opponent, Wyatt Wells, leads on Gemstone Mind Sleight of Hand. And uh, Wyatt, man, I gotta say, you already misplayed. You registered a white-bordered sleight of hand, brother. Portal or bust, sir. Oh, Ray. Huh, desperate Blood Moon. <laughs> Ouch. Turn to Blood Moon. Pretty beastly. Gemstone mine, gemstone mine, go, says Wyatt. I love prison decks so much. Wyatt uh, has a lot of non-basics in his deck. He has one island, one plains, one swamp as his only sources of mana right now. Um, I guess in a pinch he could like Simeon Spirit Guide for extra red mana. He could Lotus Bloom. He could Pentad Prism with one Sunburst. But that's um, it's pretty narrow. Rabble Master for Ray who gets in for one. And Wyatt, sitting on a bunch of mountains. Maybe he'll, like, lightning storm the Rabble Master or something. That'd be pretty funny. Ouch. Takes another chunk. 13 is, at, is Wyatt Wells. Let me go ahead and update this. For y'all, 13 life. Ray casts Tormenting Voice. Amonkhet Limited role player. Usually not even good enough to make the main deck in Limited. He's playing 3x in the main deck in Modern. Wow. I actually really like that addition. That's really cool. It lets him get rid of extra Blood Moons. Ensnaring bridges when they're garbage. Extra chalices. Extra rituals when he already has mana. That's a really cool addition. Ray draws mountain. No matter what he does, he has Wyatt on a two-turn clock. About to take a bite out of crime here. 
where crime is this dirty combo deck. Yeah, I see him count up the damage. Down to seven life. My calculations are correct. Big, oh, five life. I don't know how to count. Blood moon number two. Why not? White Wells, one more turn here. Ad nauseum. Not gonna do a thing. And he scoops him up. God, I love Blood Moon. I love Ensnaring Bridge. I love Blood Moon. I love Chalice. Modern does not have Force of Will. And it does not have Wasteland. And it does not have Days. But there are still ways to keep people honest, right? You have Blood Moon. Yeah, you have Lock Components. You have Chalice. You have Turn 1 Chalice if you want it. And uh, Ray wants it. Love it. And Wyatt is a man who does not like to be kept honest. I mean, look at this deck. This is greedy and combo-y. And to be honest, I love the choice for this tournament. Because with the rise of the Counters Company deck and Dredge, these like slower combo decks... I mean, this is perfect. This combo deck is like a turn faster. Does not interact on the axes that people are going to be ready to fight this weekend, which includes these creature strategies, death shadow strategies, wild nacodal strategies, whatever. Uh, I think it's an amazing choice for this tournament. Unfortunately, he's running into the man the hammer slammer man the man with the five digit dci number who's probably had a thread on mtg salvation longer than i've been alive about this deck ray karkman the man is all business his shirt matches his strategy aggressive His unglued mountains speak to how long he's been playing. By the way, Ray, uh, love the mountains. My favorite basic land. Major props for not like shelling out for guru lands, which, you know, they're fine. The unglued, though, ooh, they look good. They look good. Nothing beats an unglued island. Unclude mountain, unclude forest. Love him. So as he gets sideboard, I'm wondering who's going to be advantaged after board. And I have to imagine it's still Ray. Because Wyatt, I, I mean, his sideboard is great against most red decks. He has Leyline of Sanctity to buy a ton of time. It's not good against this red deck. Because this red deck is not trying to target him. It's not trying to cast a Boros Charm or a Tarkos Command. It's trying to cast Lock Pieces. And he has, what, one Echoing Truth? One Patrician Scorn? One Pact of... He has some random one of, sure. But he doesn't have Hand Removal. He doesn't have Counter Spells. He doesn't have these cards that will help him here. He gets to make some minor upgrades. I guess he can bring in two Thoughtseize. That's that's fine. Uh, he has to cast it turn one, though, because Ray has the power to cast a turn one Blood Moon or a turn one Chalice. Ray, on the other hand, does have a few cards to bring in. He has things like Ratchet Bomb to fight against Lotus Bloom. He has things like Spell Skite, if he, if he fears targeted removal at his lock pieces. I wouldn't be surprised to see him bring that in. Take out some anti-creature card. Uh, Shattering Spree, which is a pretty good one. Against Lotus Bloom and Pentad Prism, specifically Prism. 
it's tough because raise answers are okay in specific situations, but they're not catch-alls, right? It's it's not like uh, he's playing a card that says end the turn. It's, he's not playing stifle. He's not playing thoughtsies. He's playing kind of narrow answers, right? Like Phyrexian Revoker might do something. Witchbane Orb might do something. It might not. There's Lab Maniac. So both players do not have the sideboards for this matchup. Kind of looking at a rehash of game one. I expect to see Ray Mullen get aggressively, try and find a lock piece. I expect Wyatt to really not have much of a choice. It's not like he has fetch lands to fetch basics. He has three basics, and he has to draw him naturally. Or get out of prism before Ray puts down his hammer slammer. Both players pretty composed. It's early in the day. They have a long way to go before they lock up a top eight of this turn. Let alone win the invite to the finals, which is what the grand champion of the tournament gets. First place gets the invite to the Titanium Finals next January. Exclusive 24-person tournament. Lots of money given away at that. That's what these players are really playing for. The $500 first prize, that's great. But when first at the Titanium Series is four figures and it's a 24-person tournament, that's the real prize. Long term. So Ray keeps his six, scries to the bottom. Wyatt opens pretty placidly. Just a temple. Doing some scrying of his own. Now Wyatt would love to slam a Pentat Prism here. Wow, what an opening. Island into Pentat Prism. That is a beautiful thing. Basic land. And the extra mana. Let's see what Ray's got. Mountain Mountain Spirit Guide. Blood Moon. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, basic Swamp. Wyatt Wells, my hero. Uh, looks like we have a judge call here, uh, and rightly so, because there's a blood moon in play, um, and why it did trigger the comes into play ability of Temple of Deceit, which would usually work, except for the blood moon in play. That land is a mountain that comes into play tapped, so why it did peek at the top card of his library. Let's see what the judge does here. Judge saying it's just a warning. Not really a huge deal. We all make mistakes in magic. We expect our cards to do what they say they do. Why does probably goldfish this ad nauseum deck? Ad infinitum. And always scries. So, no reason to think that that's malicious or he's trying to cheat, anything like that. People are always quick to jump to that conclusion. Probably an honest mistake. Now that said, this is why they track it, right? Because they have to be able to know. Uh, if a player does this every tournament, well then, yeah, that's maybe an issue of something larger going on. But my best guess is why it won't make that mistake again today. Grab Master comes out, hits for one. Why it has access to his combo right now. Let's see if he has the pieces. Yep, Angel's Grace into.
ad nausea. Nice. So this is going to allow Wyatt to draw as many cards from the top of his deck as he wants. Benefit for us, we're going to see some of his sideboard choices. We have to see the Thought Seasons in his deck. We have to see the Echoing Truth in his deck. One of Mystical Teachings. Spicy. Very spicy. The Unlifes, the Lab Maniac is still in there. All the Spirit Guides, of course. Light of Hands, Lotus Blooms, Pentad Prisms. White draws his whole deck. Goes to one life as per Angel's Grace. Ray Karkman, a man waiting for the end. He knows this little song and dance here. Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm, a really weird card from Cold Snap. Um, while the spell is on the stack, you can discard a land to put two charge counters on it and choose a new target. So any player can play that ability. Uh, but really, Wyatt is the one who will play that ability. He's going to hit Ray for like 35 or something. Some ridiculous amount of damage. Now, Ray had a Ricochet Trap in his hand. Normally that would be good against a deck that's trying to effectively fireball you out. But with Lightning Storm, after he changes the target, Wyatt can rechange the target by discarding another land card. Change it back to Ray. So, not an effective sideboard card. Uh, the wording on Lightning Storm is really weird. Very few people have actually read it. I don't fault Ray for siding that in. Hopefully, he realizes now and sides that out. Let's see if he can. See there, old school Siege Gang Commander. Scourge Siege Gang Commander. Props to you, Ray. Old school player. So, we even this up at one and one. These players fighting for the chance to be 2 0. What the heck did I just do? Doing a little re-sideboarding Ray, putting back in the tormenting voices for those useless cards he sided in that he thought would work, like Ricochet Trap. Putting those back in. Good, he has the Witch Bane in, he has the Ratchet Bomb. Graph Diggers, yeah, not going to do anything. Maybe he thought that Wyatt was trying to empty his Warrens or something like that. Definitely should side out the Graph Diggers. Sweltering Suns, yup. The Anger of the Gods. One of the big problems with Ray's deck was that uh, it couldn't really control its draws. It didn't play blue. It didn't get to do things like cast Sleight of Hand or Serum Visions. And these decks are always a little inconsistent, right? Because you're at the mercy of what you draw. You're playing mono red. What card selection is there in mono red? But Ray Karkman has added Tormenting Voice to this deck, which I love. It is awesome. It lets you keep a hand that's like one Ensnaring Bridge, one Chalice, one Blood Moon. Or like two of those. And then once you see their first land, their first couple spells or whatever, you get to choose what you discard. You get to sculpt your hand how you see fit. Really cool addition. I might have to put this deck together later. Because I have the mono red scred deck together. But this might just might be better. 
four simian spirit guide and three gemstone caverns. There are a lot of ways to cast one of your lock cards on turn one or turn two. Add that to the rituals, the 5x ritual in the deck, the two mana add three ritual. This deck's probably really consistent. It's pretty awesome. Modern is wide open. You can do whatever you want. You can make your own deck. As long as it respects a few things about the format, you can do what you want. It's really cool. Right here we go. Ray on the play. He sees a terrible hand. Showing his hand to the camera. Thank you, Ray. A gentleman and a scholar. And I think that's the right decision. Four mountains, two rituals, and a chalice. That is that is all in. That hand folds to a single Echoing Truth, a single Thought Seize, a Phyrexian Unlife. You can't keep that. Chalice of the Void is simply an addition to the lock. It doesn't win. Like, maybe it wins against Death Shadow. And not against Wyatt. Not against Ad Nauseam. So good mulligan. Ray does not need a lot of cards. He just needs the right combination of cards. He needs like a turn one blood moon. Turn two blood moon. Turn two planeswalker. So oh, here we go. See this hand is already better. It has two chalices, not just one. Yep, got to keep that. He puts it on the bottom. The Scry also very good for this deck. Temple. Keeps it on top. Lotus Bloom. Comes in. Our apologies for the glare. We'll get that fixed after this round. Hyretic Ritual. Blood Moon. Chalice on zero. Chalice on zero. Does he want to put a Chalice on zero yet? That's the question. He will do it eventually. For that Lotus Bloom that's coming off Suspend. But he decides that he doesn't need to do it now. I'm inclined to agree. You saw why it's entire deck, no counter magic. You're protected from Thought Seize because, well, you have two of them. So I like it. Maybe it'll uh, trick Y into scrying another Bloom to the top, something like that. And I think Chalice on one, Chalice on two. A very good play here. If he could get a Chalice up to three, yeah, that's good, but I don't see that happening. That's not really realistic. Chalice of the Void enters play. Chalice of the Void enters play. Zero and one. Oh, I love prison strategies. Did I mention that I love prison? I think I might have mentioned that once or twice. Another Lotus Bloom drawn by Wyatt. Gemstone Mines, Lotus Blooms galore. They can't enter play. They get countered. And the Gemstone Mines are just terrible mountains. Gross. Shattering Spree from Ray. And if I'm him, I think I might just run out the Simian Spirit Guide. Ritual Spirit Guide, get a clock. Put uh, Wyatt on a five turn clock. As janky as that seems. Yeah, good, Ray. I like it. Ray has clearly played this deck a lot. He knows what's up. He slams the Spirit Guide two for winning himself. Without hesitation, he knows that that's the right play, even though it feels bad. You gotta get a clock on. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
Neither player's laughing somehow. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> wow, he says go? <clears throat> A little surprised Ray didn't attack with the spirit guide, but I guess I understand. Uh, attacking with spirit guide lets you lets you set up mute of all the attacks for the next turns. That's the thing about attacking with spirit guide. And wow, wow. Sure, that's probably gonna happen anyway. Doesn't really matter. Here we go, cough of the hammer. That is a clock right there. That's a real clock. Untap the mountain. Crash for four. Yeah, race is not the one I played this turn. Because he knows what's up. See what Wyatt can muster here. He says discard phase. That's not what is supposed to be happening here. Cock picks up. No Mutavault. Must have something better to do. Oh, I'm so stupid. Listen to me blab around about Mutavault. There's a Blood Moon to play. Who am I to doubt? Ray Cartman, inventor of Pyro Prism Hammer Slammer. It's an amateur mistake. Spirit Guide comes out for Wyatt. He's at 12. Just another chump blocker. Now, why it does have a patrician score in his hand, which says if you played another white spell, um, you can capture for free, destroy all enchantments. That lets him ca uh, kill Blood Moon, but. He needs to have played another white spell. And as of... Yeah, he does not have the mana. He absolutely needs a Pentad Prism. Because Cop Emblem says in three turns, you are D-E-A-D. -E White Wells, eight life. needs to find a Pentad Prism this turn. Or a Basic Planes. That would be far better, but there's only one of those. Alright, has to be this turn. Ooh, okay. Pentad Prism. Can he get out from under the yoke? Dead prism. One counter. Okay. But does this do anything? That's the question. Does this do a thing? Because Angel's Grace, even though Chalice, or even though in a split second, rather, Chalice on one still counters it. Yeah, there it is. The handshake. The prison strategy prevails. Ray Karkman moves to 2-0. and oh. I love it. I love it. Ah, Blood Moon, Chalice, Ensnaring Bridge. I have to build this deck. This is amazing. Ray, you're my hero. I mean, who plays Siege Gang Commander in Modern? What? What kind of crazy man plays Siege Gang and wins with it? 
this crazy man. Ray Clark moves on to 2-0. Five more rounds of Swiss today. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it this far, listen to me gammer on about Hammer Slammer ad nauseum for 30 minutes. That's pretty cool. If you do want to watch round three or any other round, just keep on letting this play. This playlist will take you through the entire day. June 3rd at TJ's. Any comments, criticism, anything, please comment. Or tag me on Facebook. Or tag TJ's on Facebook. We'll read it all. We'll see it all. Uh, and we'll respond to it all. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till round three.